Hello everybody! Welcome to another video from Code Shots with Profanis. In this video, we will talk about the signal queries and how to use them. We will start with a small portion of a theory and then we will move directly to the coding. So, without any further delay, let's get started. We'll start working with this card and what we can see here is that we have this kind of image and then we have a title and then we have a content. The title will be an input while the content will be a projected content using the ng content. And please note that the image for this card and for this example will be just a default image set by CSS. Regarding the content projection, we have the option either to provide the text or to provide any other component. And now you might be wondering, how can we query these kind of elements? And when we are saying query the elements, we mean, how can I have access to my code of the image, of the title, or of the projected content? Here we have two different options, the view child and the content child. The view child queries the direct elements of the view component. So let me go back and talk about the direct elements. With direct elements, we mean the image and the title. And then we are going to use the content child for the projected content to the component. So again, let's go back and talk about this one a bit. When we're using a content projection or the empty content, what we are doing is that we have our view and this view is being initialized as part of another view. So that view is being initialized and then it is projected here. And that's why we are saying content projection. In this case, in that example, for the card, we're going to use view child for the image and view child for the title, while we're going to use content child for the projected content. So let's go to the VS Code and start coding. This is our card, and as you can see here, we have the image, and then we have a title. This is our content, and here we have also this kind of footer, and we will see why we have that footer. And if we go to VS Code, what we will see is that we have the app component where we're using the card component and finally we have the card component. So let's start with the app component first. So here what we have is the app card where we're providing the title and then we have the app card content which is the projected content to that card. And we also have the app card footer which again this is the projected content of that card. Now, let's go to the card component and see what we have. So here we have the title. We have the engine content where we are selecting the app card content. And then we have the engine content where we are selecting the app card footer. So please note that in this video, we are not going to focus on how the content projection works. If you want to see more about the content projection, please check that video that pops up on top and you will see everything you need to know about the content projection. In this video, we will focus mainly into the query signals. So like we said, here we have ng content here and ng content. And now let's start by querying some elements. And we have here to make up some requirements. Let's say that we're going to grab the title and we need for any reason to know the height of this title element. So what we need I will create here a title element and into my card component I'm going to have my title element and this is going to be a view child. Please note that in this case we are querying the direct elements and I'm going to have my view child which is a title element and into the locator we have the option to provide either a template reference variable, a directive or a component. So we are starting with this one and since now this is a signal, we have the option to use the commuted or even to use the effect. In this case, we will start by having just the effect and we are going to console log the height of this title element. So into the constructor, I'm going to have my effect and into the effect, I will do the following. I would like to grab the, this title element dot and as you can see now, this guy, the card element, 
the title element is of type unknown. So let's try to fix that. We know that the title element, which is this guy, this is an HTML element, right? So we can be like, I want to have here a reference, an element ref, and I know that the reference of this one is going to be an HTML element. So now the title element, if we click dot, we have the option of the native element. And what we would like to grab here is this method, get bounding client rect. And this guy will return the width and the height, among other information. And in our case, the only thing that we need to have here is just the height. So I will be like, I want to grab my height. This thing. Since we have that, now we can just console log. Console log, and this is our height. So let's see what kind of problem we have here. It says that the property height does not exist on type domrect, which is the response of this method, or undefined. And the reason of having undefined here is that we have this question mark because the title element might be undefined. We can switch that to an exclamation mark and the problem won't be there. But you know what? This is not the right approach. Since now we have the view child, have been introduced one more property, and this is the required. And having the required there, it's much better since it will also throw an error in the developer mode whenever we do not have that element appear into our view. So let's go to the browser to see what we have. And if I open the developer tools, we can see that here we have the value 30, which is the height of this element. And we can verify that, which is 30. Nice. And how about now if for any reason I do not have this view child element? I mean, this guy here. I will comment this out and let's go to the browser and we can see that we have a nice friendly error message which says that child query result is required but no value is available. Nice. So this is how to use the view child or the view child required. And like I said previously, here we have the option to provide into the locator either a template reference variable like we have here or we can even provide another component and you know what let's create another component for the title to see how this is currently works i will have here my title and this will be just a signal input equals an input and the type of this is string. Nice. So let's now have this here. And I'm going to grab the upcard title. Let's scroll down. And I will replace this guy. Or you know what? I will replace this guy here. I want here to have just my upcard title. And I will provide the title, which is going to be this title. Nice. Before even we query that, let's go to the browser to see what we have. And it seems that everything works fine, and we even have here the 30, but this one now, it's not based on our component, but it is based into the template reference variable, which we don't need it anymore. But of course, now we're going to have an error. And to fix that, what we need to have is to change our locator, and the locator will be our card title component. So let me scroll down and I will replace this guy into my card title component. And it seems that we have some errors here. So let's remove this guy and see what is happening. So here we have the property native element does not exist on type card title component, of course. Because what is happening with the view child is that it will return a reference of this card title component. But we also have the option to grab a different token. And in this case, I don't want to grab the instance of this component, but I want to grab the token of the element ref. So now we have our title element, and here we have this title element, and we have the native element, and this method. And if we go to the browser, we can see now that this is 21.6, which is this guy. This is the actual height of this component. And again here, we're not trying to make it 
perfect in terms of height, width, and stuff like that. The only thing that we're trying to do here is to understand how the view child works. And of course, you have to adapt that to your own needs. So currently we have seen how to have the view child, view child required with a locator of a component and with a locator of template reference variable. How about now if we have more than one titles? Again, what I'm doing here is that I'm making up the requirements. So here I have this kind of titles. Side note, I could convert that to a signal input, but perhaps I can do that later. So I have here this kind of title, which is a string of array. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have it here. So let's do that. So if I have a title, I will use this one. Otherwise, I'm going to iterate into the titles array and I will have many upcard title components. Nice. So let's now go to the app component HTML and instead of title, I will provide here titles. And instead of a single item, I will have here an array. And this will be my first title. Here will be my second one. And let's have also one more. This is going to be my item B. Something like that. And now if we go to the browser, we can see that we have three titles. Doesn't make sense in terms of requirements, but at least it makes sense of what we're trying to achieve here. So what we need now is to grab all of them. And I'm going to calculate the height of every single item. So let's go again to the card component. And what we can do is the following. The view child will return the very first item. But in our case, we don't have only one item, but we have multiple ones, so we're going to use the view children. And please note that the view children does not have the required option. So here we have the card title component and the title element. This is actually an array and we will name that title elements. And what we can do, so let's comment this out and I want to have the title elements and perhaps we need to grab the height of each one and have an accumulated value. Since we need to have an accumulated value, let's go and create and use the reduce. So here I'm going to have my height equals from this element, I'm going to grab the native element, get bound and client direct, and then my accumulator will be the accumulator plus the height. And I will return this guy. And here I know that this is going to be my total height. So const total height equals this guy. And I will just console log this here. Something like that. So let's go to the browser to see what we have. And we can see here that we have the total height of 63. So let's make sure that this is the reality. The first one is 21, 21, and 21. So yeah, this makes 63. And again, we're not trying here to make it perfect, the only thing that we need to know is how to access, how to query the elements of this card component. And again, either using view child or view children, the locator is the same thing. We either provide a component or a directive, or we can even provide here a template reference variable. So this is about the view children and view child. How about now query the projected content? And in our case, we have two different slots. We have the upcard content and we also have the upcard footer. And again, let's try here to make up some requirements. And the requirements will be the following. I would like to present the footer only if the card content is projected. So as of now, I have here my content and I have my footer. And if I remove the content and we'll go to the browser, we can see that we do not have anything in terms of content, but we do have my button, which is our footer. And according to the new requirements, which we have just made up, if I do not provide any content, I want to hide also the button. So how can we do that? To achieve that, we need 
to query the projected content and apply a condition. So let's go to the card component. And here I would like to have my card content equals. And in this case, I want to use my content child. And I will query by using the card content directive. And you might be wondering why and what this is. So card content directive is the selector of this guy. So let me scroll up a bit. And as you can see here, I have my card content directive, which is up card content, the thing that I'm using here. So now I have my card content directive and I can simply have a condition here. My condition will be if my card content is truthy, then I'm going to have my footer. Otherwise, I don't want to have my footer. If we go to the browser, we can see now that we have both the content and the footer. However, if we remove the content, we expect not to have the footer either. And yeah, we do not have the content and we do not have the footer. So the content child again has the required, which means that we will have an error if this guy is not there. So if I remove that and we'll go to the browser, we can see that now we have an error. Of course, in our case, we don't need to have this kind of required because the content is not required. We need to have just this kind of condition. And other than content child, we also have the content children. And please note that the difference with content child and content children is that the content child grabs the first element that appears into the projected content, whereas the content children returns everything. To summarize, I really like the new API compared to the old one where we had to use the view child, view children, content child and content children decorators, since we now can access the results as soon as they are available. They are just signals and we can use the effect or computed methods and these methods will be notified as soon as the results are available. How great is this? And again, compared to the old API, I prefer this one since the view children and content children return a simple array and not a query list like we had before. So this is what I wanted to share with you today. Please let me know what you think in the comments below and do not forget to subscribe and click the ring bell. See you in the next video.